everyone, Abby here, and welcome back to my channel for Tech Tuesday, or welcome if you're new. Now today, I'm gonna be reviewing the new Samsung Galaxy Fit 3 smartwatch. But before I get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you can stay tuned to all my new videos dropping weekly and so you can help the channel grow. So I have this in the color pink gold, and it did come out in some other colors as well, which you could see on screen. And the current price as of recording is 84.99 Canadian and 49.99 American. Now these are some sale prices I saw as of recording. The regular price does come up a little bit higher, but still a very affordable smartwatch. And this is a smartwatch that was released in 2024. It's still very new and I have seen it going on sale quite regularly, at least once or twice a month. So it's great that it is going on sale already. And all right guys, now I'm gonna go into the major spec highlights about this watch so you can get an idea about what this can do. So it has an AMOLED color display. It tracks a variety of workouts and activities like running, walking, dance, swimming, and more. It has connected GPS which requires your smartphone for your outdoor GPS activities. It has sleep tracking, step tracking, heart rate monitoring. It also has basic smartwatch features like alarms, timers, stopwatch. You can also view smartphone notifications on here. You can see women's health data, control the music on your smartphone, and more. And this review is not sponsored. I did buy this with my own money here. And all the opinions I'm sharing are my honest opinions today. And all right guys, here it is on me, and I do have a seven inch wrist. It does fit me quite nicely, I think. It does have one of those type of bands that just tucks in. I do find it very comfortable to wear. It is super lightweight, and the silicone here is nice and silky smooth. The heart rate monitor is slightly elevated. So when it's actually sitting on my wrist, that's the only part that's touching my wrist. And I actually like this because less of the watch is on your wrist, so it's less of an area to get sweaty. One thing about the smartwatch is that it's so light and comfortable. Honestly, within like 10 minutes of putting it on, I forget it's on my wrist. And sometimes I'll find myself just like looking at my wrist to see if it's still there, if it's fallen off. I do think it looks pretty nice on. And if you're wondering if this will fit your wrist, Samsung hasn't provided a full list of wrist sizes that this can fit. So I've done my measurements there and I have some approximate wrist sizes I think this will fit the best. All right guys, so when it comes to the display of this smartwatch, once again, it does have an AMOLED color display. In my experience, the display is easily readable indoors in a variety of different lighting situations. It does have adjustable brightness. Right now, the brightness is at medium. So I'm gonna show you guys, this is the lowest brightness setting. You can see what that looks like here. And for example, I'll put it right up to the top. Super duper bright. There is a bit of glare being an AMOLED display. Now here's what the smartwatch looks like outdoors. Now outdoors in the sunlight, Depending on if it's like a super sunny day to an overcast day, it may or may not be hard to read. I find that when I'm outdoors, I do have to pump up the brightness a lot. So that's something I don't love because when you're outside and the brightness has to be higher for a longer period of time, your battery life will drain a lot easier. But I will say once the brightness is high enough, it is readable outdoors in my experience. And if you're finding this video helpful so far, please go ahead and smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. So this smartwatch tracks a variety of activities. I'll show you guys all of the activities that it can track. So you guys can see some here, but it's in alphabetical order to make them easy to find. So this can track a huge amount of activities. And that's one thing I really give Samsung is they can track a lot. A lot of other companies, they don't track as much activities as this smartwatch does. So I'm gonna show you guys all of them here because everyone always asks, what can this track? So now you guys can see every single activity that this smartwatch can track. And there's a lot of them, even more specialized ones, which I wouldn't expect to see. And those are all of the activities that we can track on this smartwatch. All right, guys, so when it comes to activity tracking, I think it does a really good job, especially at the price bracket that it's in. I've done a variety of workouts and activities while wearing this smartwatch. So it'll track things like, you know, your duration, your pace, your calories burned, your heart rate, 
and more. It also has a auto workout tracking feature where if you just start doing an activity, it will track it automatically. I did go for a couple of walks outdoors and it started tracking it after a few minutes. I think it's pretty good if you are, you know, doing a workout and you forgot to hit start, but I personally do prefer to just start my workout on the watch. That way I can make sure it's accurately tracked. It's the correct activity as well. This right here is the SPO2. So this is the last reading I did and the SPO2 on the smartwatch is great. Now, some smartwatches I've used have had very poor SPO2, but they've got it right here. This is pretty accurate to my normal SPO2, which is usually between 99 to 100. And I've done a variety of readings and they all come back solid. And I found the heart rate data to be really good as well. Even if I'm doing like a hit activity, it really tracks the, the fluctuations from like lower to high intensity pretty quick. So I found the step tracking to be pretty good. For example, it did take 100 steps and I counted it out three times. And when I looked at the Sora watch, it recorded 99. So that's not a super scientific test here, but I think that is pretty accurate. You do need to move your arms to, you know, get the steps here. If you're someone who you're just walking, pushing a shopping cart or pushing a stroller, it doesn't really track all of those steps very often because you're, you know, your wrist is kind of stationary and you're not moving. It does need motion to accurately track your steps. All right guys, so when it comes to sleep tracking on this smartwatch, you can see basic sleep results when you wake up in the morning. If you do wanna see more in-depth information, you do have to sync your smartwatch to your phone for it to kind of calculate that and bring that back to you. So you can see my sleep from last night here. So I've already synced it to my phone. You can just click on it now and I can see more information here. We can see the time I fell asleep, the time I woke up. You can see the sleep time. You can see the score we just saw. And then now you can see all the sleep stages. So we have our deep sleep, our time awake, our REM sleep, and our light sleep all here. You can see that information on a graph there and then on another format here as well with the specific durations. And if you do go onto your phone, you can see more information. I'll just show you guys that. So it does have a good amount of sleep information available. Something that I've noticed about the sleep tracking is that it's a little bit off when it comes to the stages. I definitely think the time awake is way too low and the light sleep is way too high. Um, so they definitely do need some refinement here, but I think overall, if you're looking for, you know, when you fell asleep, when you woke up, and if you kind of slept well or not, you do get a pretty good representation of that here. All right guys, now we'll be talking about women's health. So for my men out there or anyone else who doesn't want to see this, you can use my timestamps in the description below and skip to the next section where I'm going to be talking about battery life. So the Galaxy Fit 3 here does have a women's health option available. It is one of the tiles that you can add. So here you can see a predicted fertile window. So that could be helpful if you are trying to get pregnant. You can see, you know, predicted ovulation dates and a predicted period. If you are on your actual menstrual cycle, you can track, you know, your flow intensity and you can also track, you know, daily how you're feeling. You can track your symptoms, your mood, sexual activity, any discharge. If you have spotting, an ovulation test, if you wanna add those results in there as well. And you can do this on the watch or on the phone in the app. I think it's nice to have a women's health app here to help you better keep track of your menstrual health and your you know, overall daily mood and symptoms. But I personally don't love the format here. I do wish that it looked more aesthetically pleasing and it was a bit more organized as well. This smartwatch has a quoted battery life up to 13 days. I think that's fantastic for Samsung. With my usage, doing things like connected GPS walks, runs, using daily alarms, timers, and more, I've gotten on average eight to eight and a half days of battery life with this watch. Now for me, that is great. I really only have to charge it once a week or every other week. I haven't seen this type of battery life results on their other smartwatches, but I'm really happy with the battery life here. Of course, these are my battery life results. You guys might get something higher or lower with your individual usage. And and those are my battery life results with the always on display off. It does have an optional always on display. Now, when you do turn it on, this is gonna significantly reduce your battery life. So in my experience, I just turn it off because I'd prefer to have longer battery life than to have a dim always on display that only really gets bright once you tap it. And all right guys, now I'm gonna show you the basics of how to use this smartwatch here. First thing you're gonna wanna do is, you know, wake up the display and you can do that by pressing the button here. There's a couple other features you can turn on to, you know, wake up the display. So there's raise wrist to wake, which if the smartwatch is on your wrist, turn it towards your face and the screen will light up. There's also touch the screen to wake as well and tap the button. Once the display is on, 
You can swipe down, you can see some settings here, some quick options that you can turn on and off. If you go into this, you could see your settings even more. You can turn on modes, change the vibration settings, and more options. You can swipe to the right to go back, or you can press this button to go back to the home page. Once you're at the home page, you could swipe up and see all of the apps you have on here. And I personally love that there's a calculator here because math in my head, not the best. <laughs> so it's nice to just do quick math here if you need to. So coming back to the home page here, if I swipe to the right, you can see notifications that you have. You can view them and you can clear them when needed. If you press this, once again, you'll go back to the home page. Swiping to the left now, you can see all of the different tiles you have on here. And if you go ahead and click on one, for example, you could see a bit more information about that. And you could see this is the forecast for today. And for my American friends, I am in Canada, so this is Celsius. Um, but you can set this once again to Fahrenheit or Celsius. And these are all the tiles I have on here. One thing is you can only have a max of 12 tiles. If you do want to start a workout, you can swipe until you find the workout page or from the home screen, you can double tap the home button and that opens up your activities here. And you can set timers, alarms, everything all on the watch here. Now, one thing about this that I've noticed is you can just set the alarm, but you can't set a label or a title for it. So that's something to keep in mind. If you did wanna change the watch face, you can just press that down and then you can choose them. And while I'm here, let's just show you guys the watch faces that I have on here. And it does have a variety of watch face options that you can choose. And if you go on the phone, you could see even more. So I really like that Samsung gives you really good looking watch face options. That's something that some other companies really need to get on. So yeah, it's really nice to me that they have a bunch of different watch face options and colors and designs that could really work for everybody. And that's the basics on how to use this smartwatch here. I do find it pretty easy to use. I think this is a beginner friendly watch option. So I think someone who's never used a smartwatch before could pick this up pretty easily. Now when it comes to the Galaxy Fit 3 here, I have noticed some cons about it. So first con for me would be that your phone is required to do a good amount of things. So some examples would be it does have connected GPS, so you do need to bring your phone with you if you're going on an outdoor walk, run, bike ride, something like that. You also need to use your phone to process your sleep data on here and to process your women's health data as well. Another con, it was not officially released in Canada, United States, United Kingdom, for example. You can still buy it, you know, on Amazon from third party sellers, but because it's not officially released in those countries, if you run into an issue within the first year, which is typically the warranty period for most smartwatches, you wouldn't be able to have that warranty upheld. I don't know why Samsung did not release this in, you know, North America and all throughout Europe. That being said, because the smartwatch is so affordable, if it were to break, it wouldn't be the biggest deal in the world having to, you know, rebuy a new one because of the low price point here and if there's just one band option really available um, sometimes Samsung watches have like a large and a small option so this smartwatch it's kind of one size fits all another con for me that I've noticed this smartwatch doesn't have third-party app functionality there's also no music downloadability no NFC and no Bluetooth calling there is no speaker or mic built in now one of the apps that not great <laughs> would be the stress tracking. I, I've tested it during different times of the day, sometimes when I feel stressed, sometimes when I feel very calm, and no matter how I'm feeling, I feel like the smartwatch gets it wrong a lot of the time. So for example, this reading you guys are seeing right here, this was taken during a very stressful time. I'm in the middle of, you know, wedding planning and I was having a very stressful day. So I took a reading and it was literally like right here. It's like, nope, that should be up here. I was super, super stressed and I just don't think it's accurate. I just find it always between the blue and the green. It never really goes above even when I'm very stressed. Another con for me that I've noticed is that when you are doing an activity and you need to pause it or end the activity, swipe 
and then you have to pause it or finish it. And I find if my hands are sweaty, it could be a little bit tricky here and sometimes I miss the buttons and the swipes. So I would have preferred if it's just like, I could just press the button to start and stop the activities. That would have been so much better. And I'm using this in the summer right now, but I'm thinking that this might be an issue in the winter if you're wearing gloves and stuff as well. That's something to keep in mind with the activity tracking feature here. And all right guys, considering the price, the quality, the color, the battery life, the comfort, the performance, and everything like that, I would go ahead and give this an 8.9 out of 10. I definitely do give it a thumbs up. So if you guys are looking to pick up the new Samsung Galaxy Fit 3 here, I've gone ahead and left a link down in the description for you to use. So if you're looking for a low profile fitness tracker that can track all your basics, looks good, has good battery life, and a great price point, I think this is a fantastic option for you. Now, if there's anything I missed that you guys want to know, just go ahead and drop a comment below. I do read all the comments, so I'll definitely get back to you. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.